Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is the second video in our series about authentication and building a custom authentication system using Wix code. The advantage of this is that you can completely customize the experience of the sign-up page, login page, uh, password change, and stuff like that to your brand, and you can completely customize the entire experience. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the login part. In the previous video, we talked about sign up. And uh, just a note, all of this code will be included in the template that I am offering for sale uh, on my website. So if you feel like you don't want to go through all these videos, or you feel like it'll be more helpful just to have all the code pre written out for you, uh, including the user interface that I built over here, you can hop over to my website uh, and see what I'm offering over there. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so here we have the uh, example of the login page that I built. And in order to log a user in using code, we're gonna be using the login API. And what we're gonna need to do is just import authentication uh, like we did with the signup, and then go and do authentication.login with email and password, okay? And this is the simple way to do login. Uh, but you'll see in one of our future videos, I'm going to be adding another layer of complexity to the login uh, in order to allow us to make a custom password change experience. So first, it's important to understand how the basic login works. And then in a future video, I'll be explaining how to customize this even further. So in order to do this, I'm just going to copy the code right over here and head over to our editor. And here I'm on the login page, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see a little better. So let's zoom in there to 125, and I'm gonna shift my bubble over here to the right. Excellent, so now that I copied the login code, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paste it right over here. And first thing, let's just move this import to the top level. Again, you don't have to copy paste code. I just feel like I make less mistakes when I copy the code, uh, at least to begin with, from the API itself. And as I said in the previous video, we're going to be changing all of this into async await. So let's start by making a function login member. And this function, as I said, this will be going to be an async function. So let's just put the async keyword right over here before our parentheses. And then we're going to copy over this authentication.login email and password. Put that right over here. And I'm going to say that uh, const member is logged in equals await authentication. Dot login. And then let's just go over here and say console dot log member is logged in. And I think that this might be void, um, but we'll see momentarily. Uh, and before that, we're just going to need to get our email and password. So let's say that const email will be equal to whatever the user provides in the email field. So email.value. And these are just the inputs that you saw over here before. Let me minimize this to show you. So this is email, this is password. Uh, and basically I'm just telling them, okay, the value that we're using is whatever the user put there in the input. And now I can't make this bigger again. There we go, we're back. Um, and for the password, I'm gonna say const password is equal to password. That value. Excellent. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wrap the member login inside of a try catch. Oops. I'm going to say try to do this, Oops. 
Uh, my bad. Uh, excellent. And then, oh God, oh God, what am I doing? And then let's have catch. And if we have an error, then let's do two things. So let's uh, first console that error, just so I have it here in the console. Uh, error. And I'm also going to show our error prompt. Okay. So I'm going to say error message. And this is just an error message that I set up right under the sign up button. You'll see it soon. So error message, uh, error message dot text will be equal to uh, there was an error. Please try again. And again, this error might be able to be more customized depending on what error we get back. But for now, I'm just going to put a generic message there. And then we're going to show the error message. Show. And yeah, last but not least, right here, I'm going to say that our success message should be equal to user logged in. And I'm basing this for now on the fact that we're inside of the try and we didn't catch an error. So if there wasn't an error, then I'm guessing that we authenticated um, correctly. Because as I said, I think that this member is logged in, will come back void. So I can't really use that as a condition to you know, measure if this happened successfully or not. So let's just show the success message. Success message dot show. OK, and let's just erase all this on the bottom here. I'm going to get rid of all this because we don't really need that anymore. And I have some red here. Let's see. OK, so my function doesn't have a closing bracket. So let's put that right over here. And that didn't seem to help very much. Let's format the code so I can see what's going on here. OK, so that did help. It just took a second for the squiggly uh, red lines to go away. And the last thing that we need to do is just run this function when I actually click the sign up button. So I'm going to add an event listener to the sign up button, uh, sorry, login button. And so this is submit button, I think I called it. Dot on click. And then we are going to uh, sign in. Uh, what did I call this? Login member, I think. Yeah. Login member. That's our function that we're calling when we click on the button. Okay, so I think everything is in order. And I'm going to click publish. And then as soon as the website is published, I'm going to head over to the live site just to run some tests. Excellent. So we got a little check mark. Website is published. And I'm just going to refresh over here just to make sure that we are using the most recent version of the site. OK, great. So I refreshed. And now I'm going to use one of the previous users that I had been logged in with. So I had test one and test two. So let's just use test one. So I'm going to say test one at gmail.com. And the password itself was also test one. And I'm going to click login. And user is logged in successfully. I'm going to refresh this page. And you can see here that on the upper right, it now says log out. And that's because I conditioned this button to say log out if a user is logged in. 
So this is also a great indicator that we successfully logged in. And I'm going to click log out. And I'm just going to try and make our login form throw an error to see what happens over there. So I'm going to say, um, let's say test5 at gmail.com. Okay, so this is a user that doesn't exist. So let's see what happens when I try to log in with that. If there was an error, please try again. Okay, excellent. And let's try, for example, test1, but with the wrong password. So let's say I give the password of test2 instead of test1. Uh, and I try to log in again. Let me refresh the page. So that the error message went away. Uh, in, in the previous video, I showed how to kind of make that error message go away whenever we have a new input. I didn't show it in this one for the sake of brevity, but you can just copy that code over. Uh, and test one at gmail.com and test two, log in, and there was an error, please try again. Okay, so this is how to set up a login for uh, your Wix website using custom code. Um, in the template itself on my website, everything is complete. So uh, we handle different errors in different ways and uh, the error message will go away when you select a new input. Um, for now, I just wanted to kind of focus on the login itself uh, because I already explained some of that stuff in some of the other videos. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to create a custom password change experience. Uh, so I hope you tune in next time.